evening, vampires, werewolves, and all other nocturnal beings. Welcome to Titties by Night, a Vampire the Masquerade actual play run entirely by creatures of marginalized gender and presented by Tabletop Titties. My name is Kelly, my pronouns are they, them, and I will be your storyteller for tonight. But before we get into the we want to acknowledge the colonial history of Canada and how Canada has and continues to take from a indig- The effects of colonization are still felt to this day. We acknowledge that this episode is being recorded on the stolen lands of the Anishinaabe, Chippewa, Haudenosaunee, Wendat, Sequetmik, Apache, uh, Musque- Musqueam, Squamish, Tsleil-Waututh, Coast Salish, Cheyenne First Nation. If you would like to know more about the effects of colonization, Support some indigenous charities and organizations, you can go to the resources page on our website at tabletoptitties.com slash With me, I'm joined by the investigators of the occult and on you. Hello, everybody. I am Charlene Bayer. I go by Char. My pronouns are she, they, and I play Octavia Miller, the Tremere, whose pronouns are she, her, with her lovely dog, <laughs> Prophet. Hello, hello, everyone. My name is Rachel Thielade. My pronouns are she, her, and I am playing Evelyn Stormloft, the Nosferatu, whose pronouns are she, her. Hello, my name is Emily Matchett. My pronouns are she, her, and I play Imogen White, the Salubri, whose pronouns are also she, her. Hey, it's Dare. Pronouns she, they, they, playing your resident Toreador disaster, the he, they, bay. I'm going to do it. This is just the rotation now. Have a, we have a very special guest this evening. Hey, everybody. Uh, I'm Jeremy Cobb. I'm not normally here, uh, <laughs> but my pronouns are he, him. And I am playing Mr. Morian V. Blanc. Uh, pronouns he, him, and he is from the clan La Sombra. Oh, yeah. Let's go. <laughs> Heck yeah. <laughs> Uh, Before we get into it, we have a sponsor to thank. Uh, Inspire to Create, a space that you can be proud of at Inspire to Create Shop, a small Canadian business supporting and sourcing their materials from other small Canadian businesses. They have everything to make your space as cool and nerdy as possible. They have cheeky and funny decals to personalize your walls and cars and dishwasher safe mugs sporting your favorite class for when you come out of a long rest. Roll for initiative with Inspire to Create's Dice Towers and get one for yourself using our code TITTIESBYNIGHT for a discount at Inspire, the number two, create shop on Etsy. You want me to do Sirenscape? Uh, yes. I keep getting confused because I wrote that you did, <laughs> but it's my show. All right. <laughs> it's my show now. Oh, no. Everybody, everybody <laughs> use Sirenscape when we play our TTRPGs. And that's because it allows us to make things more atmospheric by having some background music, some sound effects, and other fun little shenanigans mixed in. It's free. You can use it too. Check it out at sirenscape.com. Also using uh, the Critical Role album, Welcome to Taldore, because uh, when they released it, they were so kind to let streamers use it as long as we mentioned that we're using it. So, hey. I did it. <laughs> Yay. And we are going to give a very special shout out to our friends over at Gimme the Loot. Gimme the Loot is a Dungeons and Dragons podcast about five dysfunctional adventurers blundering through an increasingly dangerous series of encounters with varying levels of success. They do fantastic interviews as well with folks from the tabletop RPG community and have been known to host some epic PvP cage matches as well. We wouldn't know anything about that. It's not Ooh. like we're the reigning champs or anything. Come at us! Come at us! <laughs> I'll grab our belts uh, after the break to show it off again. We did this last, we did this last night. We were just so proud of it. Um, <laughs> I lit. I literally officiated this. Yes, I love being here. This is it? I appreciated you <laughs> defeating them. Uh, and I was actually just on their show. Defeat or mass yeah. awesome. um. <laughs> Slaughter. It was wanton slaughter. slaughter. Yeah. <laughs> we got to cut a promo later, apparently. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Uh, yeah, no, we super recommend checking them out via their Twitch or their podcast. And you can get all of their information at gmdlcast.com. If you are watching us live on Twitch rather than on YouTube, you 
perhaps also have Amazon Prime. If you do, we would love it if you use your one Amazon Prime subscription on us because it takes a lot of effort to lug around double D titties all the time. And <laughs> it's always easier with more members of the titty committee. Um, so please give us a shot and earn some free emotes. We have Marge, we've got Bite Me, we've got things that you can use if we roll a critical hit or if things go very, very badly. Uh, so support the show and subscribe if you can. Things don't go badly. What are you talking about? They never go bad. <laughs> yeah. Things go exactly never. the way we want them to go. Hey y'all, I'm watching these ca I'm watching these captions and you know they're doing they're doing pretty good. Doing pretty good. Yay! Uh, oh yeah. <laughs> Hooray. <laughs> Hooray, finally. <laughs> Possible. Well, triggers for tonight, uh, disregard for human life, uh, <laughs> some more transformation, and general vampire stuff. If any of that uh, affects you, feel free to step away for a moment, uh, come back when you're ready, or uh, see the episode entirely. We have a uh, previously on... Speaking of previous... Previously on Hades by Night, the members of the IOU, having recently been pulled out of torp torpor, were tasked by the Seneschal to solve their own murder. They were warned that a negative result would lead to the calling of the mortals of London. The group followed many leads that all pointed towards Albrecht, Tanita, and a Tremere named Adam Pierce. During these investigations, the Coterie found Marguerite within Hyde Park and learned that the werewolves were overrun by a corrupt spirit known as Black Spiral Dance. Evelyn embraced her longtime ghoul William. Imogen and Leon gained some fame by performing with the now widowed Melinda Moore. Uh, Belgium Jerry retained his reputation in the docks as an unbeatable fighter, and Octavia uh, reconnected with the Chantry, learning that Albrecht was trapped by Tinita somewhere. The clues started coming together when a visit, a visit to the Giovanni estate resulted in Leon learning that Valentina had a side deal to, to harvest the souls that would result from the citywide purge. Albrecht turned on them and planned to spill the beans to the prince. Anita uh, retaliated by capturing Albrecht and using him as a living hive to cultivate a new plague. This all came to a head when the IOU launched a full attack against a prison where Tanita and Evelyn's former gang were held up. Using a combination of stealth and chaos, they managed to discover her hidden lair. There they fought Tanita and Adam Pierce and accidentally killed Elbricht. There, in a swarm of bees and fire, Evelyn diablerized Tanita and left the group in a chaos mosaic. But we're going to step away from that for a moment. In this little mini chapter, we're going to put those events in stasis for the time being. We're going to zoom in a bit uh, and leave the overarching story of the city so that uh, you may take a breath. We start in a dimly lit, abandoned. The domed ceilings reveal several months of cobwebs. Moonlight slightly spills in through small windows. The rails have long since been abandoned, and in the middle of this room, there's a abandoned train, also dusty, uh, with some reinforcements inside, evidence of foul play, and uh, a few corpses, not too many. Here is the remains of an old Inquisitor train the investigators of the are well familiar with. Hasn't seen. In fact, this train tunnel also has. But tonight, there is one figure roaming about here to gather clues, investigate. Uh, we see Jeremy. Describe your kid. Yes, uh, absolutely. Striding through this abandoned train, uh, through this abandoned train tunnel, is a six foot four inch tall man uh, with shining silver eyes, medium brown skin, 
Corbin blue textured black hair. That's right, I'm bringing the blue back, baby. Uh, a goatee. Uh, and at the moment, uh, I think because he might be slightly bothered by the amount of dust uh, that has gathered here, he has pulled down a plague doctor mask uh, underneath his top hat. Uh, he is wearing a full-on uh, highwayman's coat with some boots, black gloves, sort of jauntily carrying a long black cane over his shoulder uh, and looking around. Uh, this is Mr. Morian V. Blanc, here to investigate this abandoned Inquisitor hideout. Mm -hmm. Also, one sec, I gotta fix my audio. Thanks for letting me know, chat. Let me know if it's uh, feeling better now. Um, so as you make your way through this tunnel, um, as I said, you see a lot of evidence of um, reinforcement along the edges. Um, <clears throat> and from the outside, you can see what appears to be one of the train cars that have been uh, converted into almost like a storage room. There is a uh, glass case uh, that is swung open um, and several reinforced steel containers inside. Uh, strangely enough, there's no signs of blood anywhere around the train, um, but it definitely has seen a bit of wear and tear. There's uh, signs of um, almost like streaks of black as if uh, gunpowder explosions had gone off along the side. Um, and you can tell that uh, it's, seen, it's seen some use in its time. Um, what, mm -hmm. uh, what would you like to do all alone in these tunnels? Uh, I think I, uh, Maureen's going to look around at just everything that's going on, the dead bodies, the lack of blood, the blacks, the black marks, the metal containers. Uh, he is going to pause for a moment, then he's just going to reach into his pocket, pull out this semi-conscious squirrel, uh, pull out like a little uh, flask, a little hip flask, pour some of the contents into the squirrel's mouth, uh, bottle it back up, and then take a quick swig of the squirrel. <laughs> uh, and then he's going to look around and be like, this, this is why I was never an investigator. Um, I would like to, I guess, check the bodies and see if I can figure out how they died. Right. Uh, give me a wits and investigation roll, if you would so kindly. All righty. Um, do I need to roll any hunger dice along with this, or is it just uh, uh, you would be the at wits one hunger it? right now? So, cool. Uh, yes. So nice. There's the wits dice and investigation. You said. Yeah. Um. Aha. Okay, I have uh, a six and an eight. Nice. Um, you can tell that with a six and with two, so that's two successes. Um, mm -hmm. You you don't find any signs of like wounds or gunshots or anything, but the bodies themselves um, have been here for a while. It's hard to tell. Um, but they seem to have died from something other than being shot or stabbed or cut. <laughs> hmm. Or oh, and they they don't look like they were bitten either. No. And they sort of they, mm. they don't look like they were arranged in any sort of way. They just sort of seem to be uh, scattered around the area. Okay. Uh, I would like to investigate the metal containers then. All right. So, hopping into uh, this reinforced cart, you can. You're almost immediately overwhelmed with this, like, acrid, aging, almost, like, excrement smell. Um, and it's just sort of this, like, lingering stillness in the air. Uh, and there's these um, reinforced uh, containers that don't seem to have been opened. Hmm. Um, I think with that nasty smell, I'm going to take the scroll back out, stick it in the nose of the of the mask, uh, and hope that the the smell will drown <laughs> out the mm. nasty acrid scent. Um, so there's a really nasty smell, but I th uh, the containers don't look like they've even been opened. 
Uh, does it look like they've leaked at all? Because uh, right now, right now, I'm thinking <laughs> there might have been like a gas, a gas attack or something. Uh, there's that no occurred. leaking, but you do see what appear to be um, like streak marks in the shape of like fingers along the uh, windows, and you sort of track the smell to those. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Can I place this smell? Uh, it's very reminiscent of sewer runoff. Okay. But like long, uh, but... long has it been here. Okay, and there are, and the people, the bodies, the hands of the bodies don't have like the sewer <laughs> runoff on there. Okay. Uh, I think I'm, I'm going to mutter to myself, I'll play uh, as I'm looking back and forth. <laughs> Um, does it, do I see any evidence of like physical, uh, obviously there was no physical violence that appeared to have been done to the bodies, but is there a evidence of like physical violence as in like an unusually strong grip or something that may have bent metal or broken glass or something like that? Uh, no, surprisingly little damage done to the exterior and interior of this, uh, train. And as you observe the areas, you, you track almost this like, cat-like movement from this uh, window that has these streaks to the glass container. Uh, and the locking mechanism is still intact, but it has been unlocked. Um, and as you're mm. sort of looking closer, uh, you hear from outside, Stranger, what are you doing in our tunnel? Uh, I immediately whirl around and go, <laughs> huh. Uh, but it's weirdly muffled because I have a beak. Uh, so just like... Uh, and standing outside of the train are three very pale figures, uh, dark makeup around their eyes, and their hair has been like greased back, uh, almost with like uh, shoe polish to make it as black as possible. Uh, they are wearing what appears to be like velvet and silk uh, capes. Um... And the three of them look up at you and says, Ah, a fellow creature of the night. Welcome to our humble abode. How may we assist you? Sorry, just to make sure. You live here? Uh, no, we come he down here during the, the night time to uh, plan our machinations. Why here, of all places? This is disgusting. Well, we, Dusty and gross. we figure that uh, a place that once held the, the remnants of, of uh, people who hunted our kind would be the last place that they would look for us. So we have set up our headquarters here. Okay, well, who are you? Well, uh, uh, why don't you come out and uh, meet us properly, friend? <laughs> Uh, I'm like, oh my goodness. Uh, I've, I, I've just, this place is disgusting. These people are disgusting. This is <laughs> beneath me. Uh, I sort of, I'm just gonna swish the, I'm gonna swish my, uh, my highwayman's coat and dramatically stride out, uh, and stand in the doorway and say, hello. <laughs> uh, you see, uh, one figure who's sort of, uh, a bit portly, um, walks forward, uh, and he says, uh, welcome, friend. My name is, uh, Jesse Von Andrews, uh, and these are my acquaintances, uh, and a very slender, uh, uh, masculine figure walks forward and says, I am Oscar, and you are most welcome within our abode. Um, and a, uh, sort of, like, more timid looking uh, uh, figure walks forward and uh, she says, uh, and my name is Mary. Uh, I am the scout of our crew. And what is your name, friend? Uh, I lift up my top hat as I whip off the, uh, as I whip off the mask and I say, Mr. Morian V. Blanc, at your service. Well, you like a sip of my squirrel. They look like audibly, or like they look visibly grossed out uh, for a moment and then sort of like compose themselves. Uh, 
and Mary sort of steps forward and says, uh, no, you keep it. Um, what can me? we help you with, my... <laughs> Uh, yeah. I'm telling you, it's the best way to get alcohol. You just put it into the squirrel, and then you get the alcohol with the blood. It's great. Uh, so I'm surprised like... you ever tried it before. Squirrel brew. Been uh, around for ages. I'm... <laughs> uh, are you... Are you some... Are you some sort of weirdo that actually <laughs> goes around drinking blood? Uh, do you not? No, no, drink blood? No, we're just, we're just playing down here, mate. Uh. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> gonna look back and forth. I uh, is, there any, is there anyone else around? Uh, no, it's just the three of them, uh, <laughs> and they look like they're a bit worried about you now. <laughs> I point at them. <laughs> just, this is an actual. It's a novelty item. It's just a fake squirrel. Oh, all right. Uh, of, co of course. Uh, yes. Yes. Very good. Uh, uh, we. Why don't you come join me? Have a come and have a seat in this in this empty train car. Uh. <laughs> all right. Yes. That's uh, good. Of course. Uh, and uh, the three of them sort of like dramatically whip their coats around uh, and follow you into the train car. I dramatically whip mine in response. You uh, <laughs> follow me in. Uh, as Is there a door to this train car? Uh, yeah, it's like one of those big sliding ones that like passengers could get up into. Okay. As soon as the last one enters, I slam this giant. Uh, oh. <laughs> absolutely feed on these three people. Uh, yes! <laughs> immediately, like no pretense. <laughs> Not, I, I just, they can't escape. I turn around and just, and like, and immediately uh, you just. Turn. And you uh, tear into them uh, as the interior of this uh, compartment is splattered in blood. Uh, and uh, you continue your investigation onto uh, a new location that you had been uh, hearing about. Um, and over a few nights of going from place to place, uh, you realize that you've been following uh, what is the events of the investigators of the occult and unusual. Um, a lot of their dealings have been directly involved with uh, inquisitors and it eventually leads you back to a place that you thought for a while now had been uh, burned and abandoned. And as you stand on a street corner uh, in the heart of the city of London, you look upon the offices of the investigators of the occult and usual, uh, dimly lit, fresh coat of paint though, uh, full working order. And we're going to cut inside. I would like each of you to quickly give me a rouse check just to see how you're feeling tonight. Just a quick one. Barely made it. <laughs> me good. too. That's a six. I succeeded. I didn't. Oh, no. Oh, no. Uh, Leon, as you arise this night, uh, like any night, uh, it doesn't feel particularly special. Uh, you hear the voice of your sire in your mind uh, commanding you to feed as you gain one hunger. And uh, for this little uh, side adventure, each of you can be all healed up and you can start with one hunger for the night. Um, as uh, things are a little lighter this chapter. I feel like I sort of tortured you a little bit last chapter. So I'm, no, I'm not here. at all. Um, what do you mean? I'm fine. <laughs> Uh, I'm sorry, <laughs> <laughs> and you hear from upstairs the uh, usual tapping of uh, Travis um, filling in reports of the various missions that you've been going on. The, the uh, uh, a lot of supernatural events have been happening around the city, so you've sort of been filling in a bit uh, more work than lately. Um, but as you come upstairs, you see him working over his typewriter, uh, having 
improved his spelling a little bit. Um, and he sees uh, the four of you uh, arrive, and he says, "Oh, wait, um, uh, welcome back. Uh, you've been rather busy lately. Um, has anyone seen uh, J Jerry? I've I've been trying to get um, a hold of him, and without Marguerite, I don't know." Uh, I believe there's some sort of dock workers tournament. Didn't yes. say much about it, but was extremely excited. He's fighting someone. I'm sure he's winning as well. So, right, yeah. Um, I he'll can... get his fix and come right back. I can see that. Um, well, I, I, I know that the transition to me is of, of, of full, full time has been a bit um, dodgy, but I, 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 I hope that I'm. Um, I hope I'm filling every void that Marguerite had left. Um, she didn't tell me where she kept her gin, though. Do we know where she keeps her gin? Yeah. <laughs> okay. She there's, opens a secret there's a hideout. secret compartment in the main <laughs> office with just Does, a lot of is, gin in it. Do we know if Marguerite would be upset if we let Travis have some of the gin? <laughs> I assume she would have taken some of it with her if oh, she, she wanted did, it. For sure. Bad. It's all empty. There's nothing in there. <laughs> it's, it's, just a bad, it's, it's, it's the like gin you have for like friends who don't like coming over. Mm. Yeah. It's polite. That's the leftovers, the bad stuff. She kept the good bottle with her. Yeah, it's okay. So Probably. I mean like I'll I'll passively just tell him where it is and like, oh yes, if you press this here. It's just this compartment, and then I'll just walk away flippantly. Uh, he sort of because <laughs> I know it's not the good shit. <laughs> he opens it up and he says, "Right, um, it's not for recreation. My, um, I went to a, a physician recently, as I can afford it, and they said that uh, a bit of gin will um, help my my nerves. Um, uh, anyways, um, you have a your nerves. What's wrong with your nerves? Um, well, I, uh, uh I don't know. Nothing. Something wrong." Slowly oh, okay. turn my head to Imogen. Just like... nothing. It's fine. Um, you, you. Uh, I had a, um, I had a few uh, people in um, earlier today. Uh, apparently, their uh, th th three friends have gone missing. Um, they, uh, uh, they routinely would uh, dress up as uh, of, of, uh, creatures, vampires from. Um, Dr Dracula and uh, some sort of costume play or something, but um, uh, they haven't been seen in a few nights, so um, I don't know if that's something uh, you would be interested. It's it's less supernatural and more missing persons, I suppose. I suppose we could. Of course, we care about everyone in the city. I mean, would, did we not just do whatever we could to save them? They'd be nothing without us. <laughs> and who knows? Maybe it was a spirit. Did not like them, their taste in costumes or something, because it's tacky and they shouldn't do it. <laughs> um, as you as you both say that, he sort of like downs a bit of uh, gin uh, and puts the glass down in the office, uh, not responding. Um, oh, all right. Or, you know, they could be fine. You could be absolutely fine. Nothing wrong with them at all. They're just away. Right. <laughs> um, it's at this moment as well. Uh, one of your f uh, flowers, uh, Imogen, has a few bees just sort of oh, yeah. hanging out on it. Um, a lot of bees have been... Uh, hanging out on your flowers recently. Um, yeah. Which is strange. But um, I must say the <laughs> smell of these new flowers that you've also been growing for us the last week or so, Imogen, are just so lovely. The aroma of the office has never been better. <laughs> I thank you. I've been working really hard at it. And you know, I think these are good for flowers, right? Yes, certainly. Right. Yes. Mm hmm. Just saying nothing. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. You know, yeah. the flowers. You just see, like, a bee just kind of go through and try to hide one going in her ear. Just like. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah, the. The the bee the flowers are attracting the bees. You know that's why why there's more bees around is because of the flowers. Mm. Yes, of course. Right. Um, 
I did. I thought it was. Spring. No, it's just the flowers. That's why it's oh. at. I, yep. Um, yes. Do you have any more information about these three folks who have gone missing? What what time? What day? When were they last seen? Do they have any friends they hang out with? It's about that time that the uh, front bell door rings. Uh, as M- Mr. Morian, you uh, walk into the offices of the IOU and see this scene before you. Hello. I finally found you. I thought you were dead, but clearly you're merely undead. <laughs> uh, what? <laughs> I was just away visiting visiting my aunt, and I was I wasn't dead at all. I was just visiting my. I'm gonna. Yep. Mm, uh, hello. I'm gonna start cleaning things. Hello, uh, <laughs> sir. Welcome to the offices of the investigators and of the occult and unusual. Uh, your uh, providers of supernatural assistance in any endeavors that you may require. How may I, Travis, be of assistance to you this fine evening? Uh, I think Morian seeing uh, seeing Leon like, oh, <laughs> cut it out. I was going to be like, right, yes. <laughs> You'll have to excuse me. I misspoke earlier. English is not my first language. Oh. I meant to say hello, everyone. It's <laughs> nice to meet you. I was looking for, for this place because I've heard so much about you. <laughs> uh, hi, my Mr. Morian V. Blanc, uh, at your service. Well, you, uh, and I you've come on an book. auspicious day as all of the, uh, all but one of the investigators are here. I will direct you towards them for further uh, assistance. You're doing wonderful, Travis. Excellent so work, hard. Travis. <laughs> yes, well done, Gold Travis. Star. Very proud of you. Uh, Octavia will reach out her laced, uh, gloved hand uh, as she uh, greets you. Mr. Blanc, quite a lovely voice you have. Uh, how did you hear about us? Oh, thank you. Uh, I'm going to I'm going to take her hand and uh, bend and kiss it uh, and say, yes, the pleasure is all mine. Uh, well, you know, I hear things, people, you've, you've been very active in the city and you have done incredible, great things, really cleaning up the place, I hear, just fighting all manner of supernatural beasties. That is quite correct. Your information is not wrong. Yes. I've heard recently, however, that there's been a rash of new beasties, bestial activity, in the wake of recent uh, events of a literary variety. Yes, we have. Yes. We've, yes. Quite, we've heard all about that, yes. Yes. Is there a place where we, uh, I just feel a real strong connection to you all, almost as though we're we're kindred spirits. Is there a place where we kindred spirits? Uh, I can I can seek? leave, sir. Uh, it's often that uh, <laughs> private meetings have to occur with the professionals, so I understand no hard feelings. And he sort of like stands up and like uh, checks that his spelling was right, uh, and goes over to the uh, coats and be like, I'll uh, I'll come back in a bit. Um, uh, farewell and sort of like looks at you Imogen and uh, waves and puts his coat on and runs out <laughs> Travis uh, yes do be a dear and follow up on Sam for me oh, all right I'll, uh, yes um, they've been uh, uh, I've seen them about the city I'll, I'll see if I can find them tonight um, thank you oh it's raining one moment sorry 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 and grabs an umbrella sorry um, I'll be out of your hair uh, and runs back out <laughs> He's honestly doing his best. He's he's gotten better. Trying very hard. He's charming. He, pra- he practiced that introduction re- a lot. He did. Huh. Yes, I could tell. Well, what is what 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 do you have to to bring us today? <laughs> Clearly, nobody just walks in without needing something. Right. And- Right. Uh, I've sorry. I've been asleep for a while. Uh, little yep. groggy. 
still kind of pulling everything together. <sighs> I've also been drinking a lot, so I just wanted to, uh, just wanted to make sure. Is everyone here in the same category of being as I am? I will slowly pull off my Plague Doctor's mask <laughs> to reveal disgusting, <laughs> just rotting flesh. And I'm like, I believe you are in very good company. And I'll put it back <laughs> down. Um, you would also <laughs> notice, um, as Evelyn does this, uh, A, a few bees kind of uh, pop out of the mask. Um, yes, but you notice um, up on top of all of the Nosferatu decay, there are thick black lines uh, creeping up her neck uh, towards her uh, her mouth um, that you, being as uh, old as you are, would recognize as the sign of diablery uh, that she has recently consumed another kindred. Uh, I, uh, ooh. Uh, I think seeing that, I'm gonna... Oh! Well, well, well. <laughs> yes, I should get to the point. So, I am here because I thought you were all dead, and, uh, the, the Camarilla has been trying to figure out who attacked you. I've kind of been working with them a little bit, but also... There's a bit of a panic at the moment. Uh, ever since the publish, the publishing of that absolute rag, um, the Dracula book, whatever, uh, the latest, frankly, in a long line of highly inaccurate texts. Uh, I, I have been the victim of one myself. It is no fun. I hope none of you were depicted in that, in that uh, absolute. Uh, the absolute roll of tissue paper, a toilet paper, that is, toilet tissue. We got there in the end. <laughs> I don't believe any of us have been referenced in it, but do tell me more. What do you know of this Dracula? The uh, real Dracula. Uh, I, I, uh, uh, storyteller, do I know anything of the real Dracula? Um, how old did you say you were? <laughs> I am at least, I would be, let me see real quick. I would be at least 300, probably a lot older. Uh, in fact, actually, uh, I am very old now that I think about it. I'm probably like over, a, I'm probably close to like a thousand years old. Oh, damn. Uh, I'm pretty old. Wild. Yeah. So then Need some shit. I'll say yes. With with, I was going to make you roll between the like three and 400, but at this point, um, yeah, you would know uh, the legend of, of Dracula. Um, he, it is, he is a real kindred. Um, he sort of got his, uh, he got his embrace through um, the kind of like mean means, uh, but became incredibly powerful through his, uh, um, his like devotion to learning how to become a more powerful uh, kindred. Uh, he's kind of an asshole. Um, and uh, keeps to himself when whenever he can. Okay. Uh, yes, yes, actually. Uh, Dracula's a dick. <laughs> an absolute swinging dick. Spotted dick, really. And mm. not not tasty. Uh, I've heard, I've heard of him a number of times. Nothing good, honestly. Just one of those people, everyone who talks about him is just, yeah. Absolute, uh, absolute ingrown toenail of a, of a person. Uh, I have actually, though, I, I have actually been around and been depicted in literature a couple of times. Uh, most recently, in honestly, I would say it's even worse than Dracula. Uh, oh, it was about 50 years ago, you probably haven't heard of it. It was, it was very dreadful, uh, old Varney the Vampire. Uh, and I'd saying that I kind of like give like a little side glance to be like, hey, <laughs> <laughs> little novel. Oh uh, yes, absolutely. That seemed no. very familiar for some reason. Yes. No. Okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, what about uh, the Arthurian legends? Is anybody here familiar with Sir Morian? That one I am uh, familiar with, yes. No. Hey, that was me. <laughs> that was me, yes. 
Hmm. I shall keep both my ears open then. Yes, that was me immediately prior to being embraced. <laughs> immediately. <laughs> Can I <laughs> see if he's got kind of bullshit? <laughs> uh, give me uh, give me a wits and awareness. I would also like to roll on this actually. <laughs> like, okay, hold and, on, hold on, uh, hold on. Morian, give me a uh, uh, either charisma or manipulate, whichever one you're doing. Um, and Listen, I'm going to go ahead in that case, I'm going to rouse And persuasion. Because, <laughs> um, you don't have to tell us which one you rolled. Just let us know the number. Okay. <laughs> is my hunger back? Is my hunger still one? Uh, no. The, you you decimated those three. The degree to which you did that gave me um, uh, the impression that you would do it multiple times over the last few nights. <laughs> yes. Yes. Uh -huh. uh, that's a seven nice. for me. What are we rolling to calculate? Uh, wits and awareness. Okay. Got an eight. <laughs> oh, <laughs> shit. I, the only way I got that was by rousing, and I did succeed, so I don't get any hunger. Thank God. <laughs> I only got four. Mm. Uh, does uh, Evelyn think that you're bullshitting her? Uh, no, I feel like this dude is actually, this dude is kind of weird and goofy, but he, he does appear to, uh, be very serious. <laughs> fully um, believing that this is actually what happened to him. Okay. Cool, yeah. Cool. Uh, right. He fully, yeah. yeah, he fully, yeah. Uh, he says, committed. in fact, the V in my name stands for Vani. It used, I was using it as the first name, but after the publishing of the book, I switched it and took Morian back because I figured it's been long, it's been a long time since those stories were written, so I figured the Blanc actually I've used before too. I'm uh, depicted in a tapestry. We have a well, living legend in our midst. Right. It's certainly been around. <laughs> yes, yes. Anybody else thirsty? I uh, would pull out a rat. Would anybody like some rat? I've got some rat brew. I would love some rat. Uh, I, it's so I, odd. We have a friend named company. Rat as well. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Uh, oh, yes. quite, quite wonder rats around here. <laughs> uh, I unscrew my hip flask, pour it into the rat's mouth again, and, and shake the rat up. I, I put my hand over it and... Uh, and, and you... Uh, I also take a piece of ice, a little piece of ice, and just stick it inside of the rat's mouth. Uh, Reminds me of the good old days of cocktails. <laughs> I lean over to Leon, and I'm like, remind me to tell... Jerry about this. Yeah, I I, I feel like Jerry kind of would like curious. this. Yeah, I was actually gonna ask him his history with Ga uh with Carmilla. I know Jerry seems to enjoy that one quite a bit. Yeah. I'm gonna drink this, can I? Uh <laughs> Okay, so if you drink Hilarious. it, strangely enough, if you drink it through the uh, veins, yes. If you drink it through the mouth, <laughs> no. <laughs> What? I wouldn't. I don't think I've ever uh, come across this sort of thing before. I think I would you just, just have to drink it, it from just, the mouth. Just, yeah. yeah. Oh, no, <laughs> you're supposed to shotgun it from the side. <laughs> oh, I see. I see. And I like shotgun the rat. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> and I do that. What liquor did you put in it? <laughs> Uh, I feel like brandy. Yeah. So it's actually nice. like it's, it's a that's actually quite good. It's got a nice like <laughs> sweet. Yeah. I mean, on top of the uh, flavor of the blood that you like, it's also got a kind of like sweet, uh, text like flavor to it, uh, and you feel a little buzz for the first time in a while. Do you need this? Uh, and I hold up the rat to Mr. Blink. I'm very fast. I can catch another. Don't worry about it. You could keep it. Here you are, Prophet, and I give it to my dog. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Prophet devours the rat. Uh, and uh, uh, Morin, you see standing next to Octavia is a uh, bloodhound, correct? Um, mm -hmm. uh, like pitch black uh, with like faint red glowing eyes. Uh, just like devour this rat within seconds. Uh, and for a moment, you can sort of, especially with your um, clan, you see this sort of like faint cloud of oblivion around its body as it gets really into eating this rat. 
Uh, and then when it's done, it sort of gets back into uh, professional uh, seeing eye dog mode and the, the oblivion sort of pulls back into its body. There you go. You've gotten on his good side. Well, you lot are just full of surprises. Ah, right. Well, why was I here? <laughs> oh, yes, the vampire, the paddock. Yes. So, and so, <laughs> it's worth mentioning. Sorry, I lost my place. It's worth mentioning I've been <laughs> eating a lot of people. That's actually not related. Um, it's worth mentioning that since the publication of Dracula, there has been quite a lot of chaos. This seems to happen every time a piece of literature is, uh, is is published like this. It certainly happened when I was when my book was published. I wish I knew who published that. I would absolutely kill them. But um, whenever this happens, people use sort of it's a great vampire panic, a vampanic, if you will, and people will use the vampanic who often commit murders, attacks on the streets. It's not clear if it's actual vampires or, you know, actual kindred or, you know. Let's circle back to the point part where you said you were killing a lot of people. <laughs> Is it possibly anything related to, to that, by any chance? <laughs> Could be. Could be. But I'm Definitely telling you, the volume of... Us, does it? It's, yes, I, it's honestly... At most, it's like a cup in the bucket. Not a drop, but a little bit more than a drop, but still. The point is, the point is, from my experience, there will be two kinds of people during a crisis like this. There are those who fear the vampires and those who admire us. I actually met a few of those. I hate them. Uh, but there's sort of like a subculture that can form. Sorry? How uh, can you give us a rest estimate of how many people you go through a week in terms of <laughs> like is is it enough that it is concerning <laughs> and draws attention? Mm, um, in an average week, probably about three to five, but most of them probably wouldn't be missed. Uh, You're oh. using. A lot of subjective language. <laughs> and are so, you from around here? I'm so sorry. We just, uh, we haven't run into you. No, I've been asleep for a while. No, I've been sort of yes, all over. Yes, you said that. I was, actually, I was actually born uh, in the African continent. And then I oh, came here, uh, had to find my father, bring him back. On the way, we met a, a witch who drank blood and she embraced me. And now here I am. Uh, but along the way, I've lived. I've, I've lived all over. I've, I did live here uh, back in. When was Henry the Seventh? When was he around? <laughs> I don't, more I don't than know. enough. More than yes, enough. Yes, I was here for what? that. Then what I left. In, I was in France. What exactly? What exactly are you? What, what do you need from us? <laughs> I, you know, I, I, like, I, Evelyn is like so literally kind of just like, like well, guilty yeah. every time you say something. Just like, ah, uh huh, yeah, okay, uh huh, uh -huh. yeah. To be fair, he's just an old man, and I think yeah. he just wants people to hear him. Like, he just wants, yeah. He just feels like a guy who's like, mm, you won't believe when I was in my. Uh, yeah. I could do. Fine, and and only in in my day. To me. Did somebody you <laughs> tried to kill get away and is going to spill the beans? I'm just con concerned if. We deal oh, no, with no, I can mysteries. jump very far. They couldn't they couldn't get away. They couldn't get away. Okay. They begged, That's but they good. couldn't get away. Very good. Yep. The reason I'm here <laughs> is because we could all die. What? That's why I'm what? Here. Sorry. I had to sort of circle back to it. Buried the lead there. Yes. Look, sleeping for have fifty our attention. years. <laughs> sleeping for fifty years does a lot. Okay. And I have been drinking heavily. Uh, both from people and from animals that I've caught since coming back. The point is, the last time, the last two times, in fact, that books about vampires were released, there was, most recently, I think 20 years ago, I was asleep, so I've only had this second hand, Carmilla, there was a very yes. powerful vampire hunter who came to the city. It is actually the reason I went to sleep, partly because mm. it got real bad. Uh, his name's Caiaphas Smith, I don't know if you've heard of him, Have but he's a him? bad man. Uh, he... hmm. <laughs> uh, those of you who nope. are, let's say, more than 
40 years embraced. Uh, give me a intelligence and history. Is that a thing? No. No. Uh, <laughs> intelligence and uh, occult. Fuck it. Yeah. Can I do it even if I'm not that old because of my history? Yeah, you've got enough people that are old around you uh, at the Chantry that you would um, be. <sighs> Two. <laughs> I only had three dice, so it's good enough. <laughs> Two, three, four, five, six. Ooh. Wow, what the fuck? <laughs> I only know things. That's all I do. <laughs> um... <laughs> Would, uh, hmm. Jeremy, would you like to tell the legend or would you like me to? Uh, I'm, I'm happy to, to tell, uh, the legend. All right. Everything uh, that Lorian is about to say, Octavia, you know. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. So I will say, right. So, and I'm going to find the nearest somewhat hip height surface and then full captain morgan onto it with one leg so i can pose dramatically uh, <laughs> as i say this and sort of stick my chest out um like right so Caiaphas smith he, he probably uh we think he's less than a hundred so he's not particularly old but but when he was when he was only and still not even a, an adult he killed one of the kindred he killed them uh he he snapped a hoe over his leg and just stabbed him and then he cut off his head and ever since then he's been absolutely devoted to destroying us he he's he, I don't know exactly what, but he's got hedge magic. I think he's got ma he's got magic, and he can track us, and he can identify us, and he has traveled the world, just learning skills. He's got connections everywhere. He's, and here's where it really gets nasty. He reverses the kiss. He reverses the kiss on us. It's, um, Terrible. It's like way a to reverse go. card. He drinks, he drinks from our blood to, to give himself powers and to, and to, and to maybe make his life longer, probably to prolong his life until he can kill all of us. Uh, so yes. Well, then what's the difference between us and him? Nothing. The hypocrite. <laughs> yes. Yes. Except I think he thinks that we're bad and so it's okay to do bad things to kill us. Yeah. Gazing in the abyss and the abyss, gazing back, etc. I've been there. I tried that. Yes, it's not good. Uh, Octavia, you would also know that um, he uses, <clears throat> he basically harnesses, for lack of a better word, holy energy, um, similar into the in the way that Marguerite uh, emits holy energy almost as like a passive. Uh, he has become so devoted. Um, and so, paladin, for lack of a better word. I was about to say that uh, when I yeah. that, shared the information. Um, he, has, he has harnessed essentially the same magic that Marguerite has and uses it against Kindred. Yes, now that you've begun explaining the details, I do remember this man. I've never met him, but I have heard tales of his prowess with, for lack of a better term, paladin-like energies and holy power used against us. This is not something that we would like to stay in the city, that is certain. Yes, as more of a rogue myself, paladins and I just don't mix. And as I said before, I went to sleep last time because I, I met him and I'm a scary man. S scary. Mm -hmm. mm, Very yes. scary. I can feel it from your aura. Terrifying. Just emanating off of me. Yes. Prophet like licks ah. your hand. Like, <laughs> <laughs> he just really likes you. 
I pet him. I'm like, yes, this, is a, this is the dog of doom. <laughs> it scratches, it scratches it's true. Uh, if, by the way, if there are any, I don't know if there are any reflective surfaces in here, but if there are, and you can see, uh, you can see Morian's reflection. His reflection is staring directly into your eyes. <laughs> uh, no matter who you are, just staring with these like sh these shining eyes, just staring daggers directly into your eyes, like into your soul. Uh, no matter where he is looking at any given point. <laughs> Love that. Uh, Are there? I got a question, Imogen. Do you keep reflective surfaces in the office? Probably not, because <laughs> I, I don't show up in them. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that might be a giveaway. Yeah, occasionally through the like windows, if it's dark enough outside, uh, you mm -hmm. can see like yeah. rem, like which makes it creepier. There's just a, Spooky, a yeah. like dark yeah. figure in the in the. It looks like someone's standing outside, staring at you. Like the reflective eyes of like an animal in the dark. That's all you see is just like. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and Imogen, as someone who uh, isn't used to seeing something staring back at you in the mirror or in a reflection, it is off-putting. Very unsettling. <laughs> yes. Oy. Yes. So I've I've come here because I have heard nothing but incredible things about you all. You've kind of continued the work that I used to do. I actually used to be a bit of a, 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 a fighter. <sighs> back in the day, uh, even before I went to sleep. Kind of what the book was about, go read it. Um, but don't, it's bad. Uh, but I came here to, to help you and to have you help me so that we can help everyone and I don't have to run away again. Of course. We yes. Yes. trust you implicitly and I would like to scry the soul. <laughs> uh, for sure. <laughs> Uh, for sure. So, uh, first give me a rouse. Yes! Ten! Uh, I'm getting so many tens tonight! Uh, so Octavia, give me an int and auspex, and Morian, give me a composure and subterfuge. Okay. Something tells me this man's got a lot of subterfuge. <laughs> I know! <laughs> I love <it. laughs> Two or three? I have a. I'm trying to find how many of uh, what I have. Oh, there's composure. Okay, so I have uh, a seven, a ten, and an eight. It's a tie. Ooh, uh, you reach out, Octavia, and try to uh, draw your energy onto the soul of this man, uh, and you uh, come up short. Uh, it doesn't feel like particularly much, like a strong barrier. It's just uh, you are dealing with a near thousand year old uh, vampire at this point. I don't say anything. Can we say that, like, as you reach out and try and touch his soul, you just feel like shadows cast over his. Like, there's this, this, this legit shadow, scary, threatening magic that's kind of like, Ugh. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. Your aura is quite intriguing to me. It's almost. I don't want to say attacking, but enveloping my mind as we discuss this and uh, i'm very intrigued oh thank you uh, yes and f i don't know if you're flirting with me or not but <laughs> you are very pretty and i appreciate <laughs> you saying that uh if you're not flirting with me then i'm sorry for misreading uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm glad that i'm having an effect if Octavia could blush, she would, but <laughs> unfortunately, she has no blood. <laughs> uh, she just takes out a fan. <laughs> uh, the, if, if you could see his reflection, the one it would just wink. Uh, <laughs> Amazing. Well, do we have a lead on where it, we are looking for this specific? Terrible holy man? Or is it a group of them uh, wandering about now? Well, I don't think he's necessarily back yet, but I think we want to maybe put a stop to the, the, the vampanic. <laughs> because if the vampanic continues to and you can you can tell me if, if I'm wrong on this one, storyteller, but uh if, if the vampanic continues to spin more out of control then it's, we could be up to our knees in Caiaphas Smith, so to speak. So, do we need to find the author of this novel and 
threaten them into confessing it was all fake? People need to stop taking it so seriously? I'm certainly pro-threatening. <laughs> I mean, way to go to the head of the snake, Evelyn. I, yes, <laughs> that's a brilliant idea. We do know who wrote the novel at this point. It would be advertised everywhere. It's on the book, mm. so we would- Stam have... Broker. <laughs> Close. Almost had it. Basically. Close enough. <laughs> Um, would we know whereabouts to find this person? Do they live in London? <laughs> I don't. I don't know, Imogen. <laughs> oh um, wait, no, we. Whoa, it's that's right. They are here. They're yeah. Okay, got you. I got you. Um, I forget. Can someone remind me what? <laughs> are they Irish? Are they in Ireland? Is that a yeah, thing? I think that what so. you were hinting at? Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, born in born in Ireland, moved to England, but I don't know when okay. exactly. I can't remember when exactly he moved, but he is Irish. Uh, also, to remind the players, uh, the fair. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. why I was like, wait, we know about heavily this. implied yeah. about that it was. Fair, right? uh, it was kind of like an advertisement for the novel before it came out. Uh, and may or may not had mm. uh, connection with uh, Bram Stoker. Well, if we don't know where he is currently, I think we know a good place to start. The fair that we all just so happened to burn down a while ago uh, did have a, a demonstration and advertisement of for the possible book. So. Do we know where any of those people are now? Any of them that survived? The Ravnos, yes. Yes, the Ravnos. But also, we really got to stop saying we burned it down. It was a riot. <laughs> Let's make it clear. Exactly. The people got whipped into a fervor I and it burned mean... down. It was not us deliberately. I've been called we... a riot many a time. <laughs> <laughs> Leon, uh... you... Uh, perhaps you are one with the show business. You perhaps may know a bit more detail about these folk that we, perhaps how we can reach out to them. Just for a conversation, of course. Will they let us in? <laughs> we don't have to be ourselves. We could be someone else. <laughs> oh, that's true. Yes, I, I can. can I that. have to be uh, me at all times. <laughs> <laughs> The character flaw. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, but you have a way with words. Perhaps, perhaps you might know. Uh, uh, storytelling. Mm. Is there is there a way or something I could do to potentially uh, see if I have any contacts that could get me to the Ravno? Um. Uh. Give me a. Give me an intelligence and. Mm. A cult. Could I do the same, just as, uh, just in case? Sure. Uh, yeah, I have any leads that might be able to help. Um, and what can I use again to roll some extra dice on that? Uh, you could roll a rouse check to give yourself uh, plus two on one of your um, ability checks. I will do that. So give me that rouse. I made it. Nice. Uh, I, I got a 10 and an 8. Uh, 10 and an 8. Three successes for myself. Three successes. Um, I feel like with your combined knowledge, you would know that um, the... You would remember that the fair <laughs> itself was actually run by mages, um, and they were sort of using the Ravnos as like a cover. Um, the, the fair itself wasn't a Ravnos thing. It was them sort of using all of their kindred knowledge to be like, uh, to basically break the masquerade in your stead. Um, and several of the mages scattered after uh, you killed their leader. Um, but you would also know just being like members of the city that setting up a large fair in the middle of the uh, city of London would require 
overhead of like making sure the city allows a lot of bureaucratic stuff. Um, and somebody for sure was at fault for allowing a incredible masquerade breaking fair uh, to be allowed um, uh, to be allowed to set up in downtown London. I also, oh, so go ahead, go ahead. Sorry, I did not mean to cut you off. Oh, never mind. No one was going to say anything. <laughs> I hear things like, sometimes. Oh, oh. I sometimes I misread uh, social situations, especially uh, when I'm not actually looking at anyone. Sorry, I was looking out the window. Um, everyone, I also know a group of people. This is sort of my last main contact in the city. Might be able to help with this. They were called the Lees. It always comes yes. back. Yes. <laughs> it does always go back. Just Lee well, now, apparently. Mm, no actually, more. not even Lee, actually. Yes. More. Yeah, it's not Lee. Boris now. And it's just no more Lees? No. God, so one more, actually. no Lee. Goodness, yes. Uh, one Lee more? No one day Lee more. Just one know. more. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> one Lee so le no more, one Lee less. <laughs> but one more now. But one Unfortunately, <laughs> Olive has passed on as uh, from as far as our information goes. Supposedly. But Melinda uh, is still with us. Gone back to her maiden name of Moore. Oh. Okay. Well, that's, I'm very sorry to hear that, but also good for her, just going back to her roots. Ooh. She's, yeah, she's <laughs> making a lot of sad music now. <laughs> Doing well. Mm. I'd love to hear it. Should we go? Should we go there? I think a visit to the theater might do us some good. Who knows? Maybe we'll get another performance from... Leon and Imogen, we've heard so much about it already. I was about to say, I shoot Imogen a look, and I'm like, are you okay with... There's a lot of us, so if you don't, we can push back against social pressure. No, it's okay, and she goes off Redding to get her fiddle. <laughs> oh, I, I used to play as well. I played the violin. I <laughs> of course, I, maybe I of course you did. I'm so... I'm, how could you not? Yes. Uh, and I, you know, yes, it Imogen great. used... It was like a hundred years ago. I haven't played in like a hundred years, but it's fine. Oh, God. Imogen uh, used to give us private concerts in this very room. Mm. Oh, can I join? Can I just help? <laughs> I want to be involved. Uh, and as, Please. <laughs> as everybody gathers to prepare for a trip to the theater, uh, we are going to go on break. Jesus. Hell yeah. <laughs> this has been Woo! chaos and I love it. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> See you soon. Bye Good morrow, fine patron. Are you looking for music for your character, campaign, or Twitch stream? Does music move you like prune juice after a colonic? Well, here at OBP Musical, we write music from any genre, from fully orchestrated pieces like this... ...to video game auditory herpes like this. We have singers from Les Miserables and Disney for vocals like this. The heroes of the north, with them we'll sally forth. The warrior knight, the maiden of air. Have a bard that's written lyrics? We can write music for them. So, if you want music that rocks, come to us at OBP Musical and get your rocks off. That sounded weird. Music and songs from any genre, from opera to country, pop to thrash metal. We are jacks of all trades. OBP Musical, music for any occasion. Birthdays, weddings, having a bris. We've got you covered when others don't. Go to obpmusical.com for more info. Hero Forge is a free to use online character design application. Create and share your unique designs using their in-depth character creator tools. Order customized tabletop miniatures that truly represent your characters. Whether you prefer to start from convenient presets or fine tune your character feature by feature, Hero Forge makes it easy. Best of all, designing, saving, and sharing characters is completely free. Visit HeroForge.com to start designing your custom miniature today and check back often. New content is added every week. I've been
been working on my Steve cosplay and I found the perfect piece to finish it off at the costume shop. They have wigs, costumes, contacts, and they even have a cosplay section on their website for people just like me. Head on over to thecostumeshop.com forward slash question mark R-E-F equal sign tabletop titties to get started. That's T-H-E-C-O-S-T-U-M-E-S-H-O-P-P-E dot com spelled ye old way. Make sure to use the code tabletop titties with double D's to get yourself $10 off at checkout. Maybe I should make a image in white cosplay next. Hello. Welcome back. Oh, this? What? Oh, you need this thing? Oh, it's so heavy. Uh, <laughs> heavy is the head that wears the crown who won the Give Me the Loot PvP belts. Uh, thank you so mm-hmm. much. Uh, Shar and I have been sitting on this belt because we had nowhere to display it in all its glory. But now that we have moved, we always have it out. And it's a real talking piece for how fun that, <laughs> how fun that show was. I have to be gracious. It was very fun, collaborative. Everyone was great. And we kicked a lot of ass. Uh, and And it was fair because we know jeremy is a very fair ref yeah exactly (laughs) yeah uh Uh, i tried to be as impartial as possible as you stomped all of the competition (laughs) (laughs) we should do like a promo before we have to defend our belt at some point that'd be great Uh, that'd be honestly amazing (laughs) I'm not going to lie. <laughs> but uh, Rachel, you had an announcement as well. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Some of you may have watched last night's episode of Escaping Tessera, in which uh, we announced uh, the winner of the giveaway for uh, Inspire to Creates. Uh, you get they The winner chooses a mug and decal of their choice. And the winner, just to remind anybody who didn't watch la- uh, last night's episode, is Algae Dust on Instagram. Ooh. So once again. Thank you so much for entering and congratulations. We will be contacting you very, very soon if we haven't already uh, for your contact information and all that good stuff. So, yay, good job, congrats. And we'll most likely be doing, we'll be, I know we have at least one more giveaway in the future, so stay tuned. Make sure you're following us on socials, all that good stuff, so yeah. Nice, all right, we will get back to it. Uh... All of you have uh, prepared yourselves for a night at the theater once more um, and probably uh, listened to a couple performances uh, either along the way or before you left. Um, Mm. It is a uh, rainy evening and uh, not a lot of people out tonight. Um, I did say we would be very ambiguous as to the outcome of the last chapter, but uh, just not a lot of people for... Either or reason. Who knows? <clears throat> ah! <laughs> I'm wow, it's crazy after whatever may or may not have happened. How <laughs> wild this city is now. Yes, it's either, it's either very peaceful or very depressing, and I can't tell which one it is. As I say, <laughs> uh, in a very generic theater goer uh, look I have going on as I have activated Mask of a Thousand Faces and I failed my rouse, so mm. I have two hunger. <laughs> you? Yeah, I am a generic, like, woman who probably has a lot of, dis- like, like a scar across her face or something because my scratch who can't look pretty even if they want to try. Um, yeah. <laughs> Evelyn, as you activate Mask of a Thousand Faces, you sort of, like, you feel your body sort of, like, crack a little bit as you do. Uh, and you hear within your mind, my dear Evelyn, your escapades as of late have been quite fruitful. Tanita has been a good guest within your mind. Uh, and you get a bit hungrier. I muttered to myself, shut up. <laughs> I walk wherever we're going. I'm walking and a bee there. <laughs> yeah, shut up. <laughs> uh, so are you all heading directly to the uh, theater then? Mm-hmm. I, I think, think so. so. Yes. All right. Uh, a lot has changed, uh, Marion. Um, you see modern uh, trappings now that you're sort of seeing the uh, the upper layer of the city. Um, there's a bit of electricity here and there. Uh, there's still the occasional lamplighter going around and um, making sure that the lanterns are lit. 
uh, fashion has changed and um, it just seems to be getting on the, the cusp of a, a new era, one might say, uh, here in 1890x. <laughs> uh, can I turn? Can I turn to to my companions and be like, you know, 50 years ago, my style was cool. Uh, I don't know why it's changed, but uh, I wasn't alive 50 years ago. Me <sighs> neither. Oh, it's a couple of baby kindreds. <laughs> Most exciting. I must say, I if... I do appreciate your taste. Uh, it's not often I see someone else wearing plague doctor attire. Yes, yes, I got it. It's actually, it's an antique. Yes, At this of point, course. like me. <laughs> yes. <laughs> is, is, yes, is it the same, same period, if both of us? Ah, do we? I didn't think I'm quite at the same level as you. I think I'm quite a bit younger, but I still, it has its uses. It has its uses. I, the only one way, unless I'm doing this, it's the only way I can go outside without the torches and pitchforks coming after me. <laughs> of, course, of course. May I ask you a question? If it's not too personal, it's a personal question. Hopefully it's of course. not too personal. Yes, hopefully it's not. <laughs> uh, I've noticed quite a lot of insectoid activity in the general facial region of the... <laughs> You don't say. Yes, is that... Uh, the other the other Nosferatus I've known, mm. I don't think were quite as buggy. And I don't think there's anything wrong with it. I was just wondering, is it like, you do have a hive in there? Yes, it's a rather new venture I've taken on. No, yes. kind of my eyes will dart away for a moment because <laughs> basically me, if I go any further, it will be basically admitting very serious crime. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, I think, I think Morian's is like, mm. it feels like we're skirting around an issue and I'm not going to press any further. Just, I'll let you know. I know. And I'm okay with it, <laughs> as long as it's not me. <laughs> Very well. Just for the record, <laughs> they had it coming, and I'll walk forward. <laughs> uh, Vardy just starts whistling uh, Cell Block Tango. Yes, uh, <laughs> it hasn't even been made yet. <laughs> it's okay, my mind went there too. <laughs> uh, I love it. I love it. ran into my fangs ten times. Uh, as you get closer to the uh, theater, you can sort of see the um, the district open up a bit. Uh, the theater sitting sort of in the um, uh, open road uh, in the middle of the area. And you see um, still quite a crowd forming. Um, both Leon and Imogen would know that uh, a lot of the attendees uh, to the theater last time were kindred. So... It makes sense. Uh, and as uh, the group approaches, uh, Imogen and Leon, you actually get quite a lot of praise and attention. People are, oh, have uh, you come to perform again, my dears? It's so good to see you. I do look forward to, oh, Jesus. I didn't think that uh, Melinda had invited them again. It is a treat, of course. Hello, uh, Imogen, it's so good, so good to see you. Just like nodding. <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. It is wonderful sure. to see all of your faces again. It has been, you know, not that long, but we were hoping to just sort of enjoy the sights and sounds tonight. And we're showing a friend around today. So uh, I don't I plan on performing, but you never really know. Uh, you... Imogen hides her <laughs> fiddle behind her back. She's like, oh, <laughs> never mind, sad face. <laughs> uh, you see a very, like, uh, uh, tall and uh, strong-looking woman approaches you, uh, Leon. Um, you get a strong, like, bruja energy, uh, and she says, Oh, are you not going to f play tonight? I was... So, obviously, we came to see Melinda, but uh, Leon... Poem would be. Uh, 
It would make the night. Oh, well, I mean, I have never been one to deny an audience. So absolutely, <laughs> let me let me see what I can do. <laughs> and then kind of like looks around at their companion and, ah, yes, excellent. Um, uh, as you are you making your way uh, in the back to meet Melinda? Yeah, no, no, giant woman asked a thing, so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, as you approach the back, uh, I'm trying to remember. Most of you, uh, save for Morian, would recognize uh, M- Melinda's like regular kind of like ghouls, which are the like faceless masked. Um, uh, butler dressed people guarding the back doors and the moment that they see Leon and Imogen approaching uh, you hear the door <laughs> unlock uh, and open uh, to allow the group in thank you yeah take us an invitation <laughs> it's lovely to see you all again I hope you're doing wonderful welcome uh, Miss Moore is not expecting you, but uh, we have been informed that any night that you two arrive, we are to open the doors immediately. That's just wonderful. Well, we have some friends as well, so we'll be making a bit of a surprise uh, meeting. Excellent. Uh, right this way. Uh, and uh, they lead you into... Um, the uh, sort of green room area. Uh, Same sort of macabre, drab uh, decorations. Uh, Octavia, you pick up that usually the theater has like uh, sweet smells and stuff to create this this sort of like environment of joy, but it's sort of been covered with this like... um, almost like smoky smell um, to create just this like, I don't want to say like a, a, like a jazz bar. (laughs) That's not the right (laughs) word, but it definitely creates this almost like um, musky environment um, to like play up the the morning still. Mm. Um, As uh, we're walking, Octavia also, um, I'm gonna just keep Prophet a bit closer to me than usual. Um, And she's sort of just feeling a higher amount of stress due to this new potential enemy and her history with the Inquisitors. Excellent. Uh, And as the uh, massless ghoul uh, leads you towards the green room, all of you uh, approach and you can uh, see uh, Melinda sort of sitting by her uh, instrument and as she hears the faint cough of the ghoul she turns around and almost in like a immediate laser reaction looks at you Marnie says you uh, stands up and gives you a swift slap across the face uh <laughs> Uh, Where I you take been? the mask. I, I turn I dramatically and I say, "I was asleep. I'm so sorry." Well, not of, not all of us were given the convenience to go to sleep when problems arise. Some of us have had to <clears throat> deal with it face to face. But it is good to see you. And she sort of like pats you on the shoulder. <laughs> uh, thank you. Um. I, I, I must say, uh, did my absence cause you problems? When you last met Melinda, uh, she was a um, large presence. She always wore uh, gowns that were massive and taking up too much space. Her hair was always done in such a way that uh, it framed her as this uh, imposing figure, and she's a very tall woman. Um, but she is now wearing um, very, like, slimming uh, attire, very dark and drab, almost in mourning. Uh, her hair has been done in, like, a uh, large braid sort of down her back. Um, and is definitely a smaller presence than uh, Melinda of the past has been. Um, 
And she looks like de you dead in the eyes and says, Nothing that we haven't been able to manage within the centuries, my dear. Melinda, you... You look diminished. Forgive me. Uh, I, I, can I take uh, the hand that she slapped with me and then put it on my shoulder, uh, take it in bo both of my hands uh, and look down at her very sincerely and say, if there is anything I can do to make up for your no doubt severe loss, please let me know. Well, now that you mention it, I do recall that you played violin. Yes. Yes, I do. Uh, pretty well, too. <laughs> and sort of like eyes you, Leon, and eyes you, Imogen, and a sinister smile comes across her face. I'm ready. I just wrote something. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you saw me pick up my journal. Love. I, I saw him. Love I was like, that. Yeah, fuck yeah. You can't just, you can't just say yeah. that so plainly after you saw me take a sip. <laughs> Um, and I'm so glad I don't have to do poems anymore. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm gonna need you to uh, uh, like mouth a violin for me. Just make some mouth noises of a violin. No, me? No. Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> that was a joke, I think. Yeah. <laughs> I was willing to try. <laughs> so with. Uh, Less further ado, uh, are the rest of you going to watch the performance or hang out in the green room? I think we'll watch. Yes, I'll, uh, of I'll, I'll take uh, Octavia by the arm and go, we'll let you all prepare and we'll discuss what we came here to discuss later. Obviously, the show comes before all of this and I will tur uh, turn to walk out and I'll be like, and Linda, it is good to see you again. Who are you? I'll hold the cane up, and I'll be like, "Oh yes, it's Evelyn. It's, it's of Evelyn. Course. Yes, yes. yes it's my, my apologies. Um, the, oh, right. I'm trying a new thing. Seeing an old old friend has had me yes. uh, flustered. Um, yes, it is uh, good to be near you again. Um, seeing yes. you will, I imagine, come at some point. And it will probably be most unfortunate for most of everyone who looks at me. Anyways, we'll be leaving now. <laughs> kind of like side eyes you, Morian. Honestly, it's I've. Expected nothing less. All right, everyone. Um, <laughs> and begins to hurriedly prepare you. Uh, Octavian, uh, Evelyn, you are uh, led to uh, box seats that are reserved for uh, special guests of uh, mm -hmm. Melinda Moore. Please, excuse me. I must have the box seats that have the best acoustic um, presence in the theater. I don't like this one. I need a different one. Um. Yes, of course. Uh, and they sort of uh, lead you towards uh, <laughs> other box seats, uh, and you hear them say, you two, out. We have special guests of the performer who has requested these box seats. You may find seats elsewhere. Uh, and you hear grumbling as uh, two <laughs> theater goers have left their seats, and you are, uh, just, you are led towards uh, their spot. Thank you kindly, uh, and I will tip them an appropriate amount of wealthy money. Yes. You hear it. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, and they walk away. No. Honestly, it just rubbed me the wrong way when she said she forgot you, so I wanted to cause a hassle. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I am not normally dressed this way, so. Oh, did you Besides... disguise yourself? Oh, yes, I'm sorry. I... Yes, I did. It's fine. Well, now I've just been a raging <laughs> bitch for no reason. No. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot to mention it before we left, and I apologize. It's good. It's good. I like it. Didn't oh, think it was oh, going to, I didn't think it was going to come up, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, we continue to chat as we get settled in for the show. Uh, the, uh, you haven't attended uh, the new performances. The... Um, uh, bombastic nature of the uh, palace theater has sort of been diminished uh, with the recent performance and without any sort of 
um, intro or warming up, you just begin to hear a cello playing. Um, Evelyn, you see on the stage now, dimly lit, uh, is a, um, again, seemingly in mourning, uh, Melinda Moore uh, playing a cello alone on the middle of the stage. Uh, and once again, uh, behind the curtains, uh, Imogen, you would remember that uh, whenever you feel prepared to go on and begin playing uh, is when you can do so. And you also have uh, Morian here now. Right. Um, so we just kind of... And then she walks on stage. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what are you doing, Morian? Uh, I think Morian usually takes off his mask when like entering indoor places, but I think as part of this, he's like, theatricality, I suppose the order of the day. Uh, I pop the mask back on, put on my top hat, which I had also removed, uh, will dramatically and I think actually what I'm going to do is before I go on, I don't know if this is like, if I can do this as like a flavor thing, but I would like to use uh, my Breath of Varney ability to uh, sort of lift up the the uh, the cone of the mask and then sort of spit out tiny little fireballs <laughs> that let that the little blue and white fireballs that sort of line uh, the front of the stage where the the candles like the stage lights would be to give like a really eerie glow. Uh, and then I'm like, I wish Octavia could see this. Uh, <laughs> and pop it back down and just, uh, I'll just tell her about it. Uh, and walk out and start, uh, with a switch of my cloak, start playing. I'll describe everything in, in painstaking detail <laughs> for uh, Octavia. Uh, give me a rouse check, uh, Maureen. Okay. Um... I can never find rouse on the sheet. Uh, it's just a single um, die roll. Oh, just a single die. Excellent. Well, it's a nine. Perfect. Uh, nice. You, uh, as you enter out and lift up your mask, you shoot out uh, these blue and white fireballs that sort of settle at the edge of the uh, stage as you begin playing next to uh, Imogen. And strangely, Octavia, you feel almost undead necrotic energy filling the room. Uh, you don't know why, um, but there is just this, like, sort of presence of death uh, around you now. Um, I'm going to need both uh, Varney and Imogen to roll a dexterity and performance for me. Uh, each of you can add an extra dice for your proficiency uh, in these instruments. And if you would wish to rouse uh, your dexterity, you can also do so. Damn, like, I definitely thought I was going to be Charisma, and that's two more dice than Dexterity. I mean, if you... Okay, <laughs> y'all are performers, and I am not. Is playing a fiddle a dexterous thing or a charismatic thing? <laughs> As someone who's never really once cool. touched a violin or a fiddle in my entire <laughs> life. As, as a person who has... It's very dexterous, right. but mm -hmm. I mean, it depends on are you, if you're doing more of a backing thing where you're just doing fundamentals. You could absolutely spin this as a prism. All right, what do you think, Imogen? Backing track? You you uh, rip, think you the back. rhythm she's, violin? She's backing tracking it. All right, then uh, y'all. She's stepped up so many times that she's not doing anything fancy the, here. <laughs> Dare's help action has made this a charisma and performance role. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, I have two sixes already. Is it worth using the additional die that you said that we could spend? Uh, so yeah, the way that um, rousing the blood works is that you roll another rouse roll, which is the one dice, and whether or not you mm -hmm. succeed, you would add... Um, I can't remember if you're old enough to have more under... Uh, I mean, a thousand years, I would imagine, yeah. so... Uh, I believe you get to add three dice to your dexterity if you did so. Okay. Is that worth doing with two sixes already? I mean, how? That's up to you. Do you want to do well or do you want to do fabulous? <laughs> I want to kill it. I want to absolutely kill it. I'm going to go for the three. Uh, okay, that gave me an additional nine. Damn. Uh, okay, so sorry. Nine, nine roll. Gotcha. Uh, yeah. All right. Um, and what did you get, Imogen? 
Uh, I did use a willpower, but I got six successes. Damn. Um, you realizing that uh, the uh, bombastic nature of Varney would probably uh, take over, you sort of settle back and play this accompanying accompanying uh, fiddle that sort of uh, fits really well. Um, Varney hops in and <laughs> almost like Devil Went Down to Georgia a little bit starts to <laughs> starts to play in there. Uh, Can I do like the dance macabre? Yeah, I'll do something uh, like that. It's dissonant for sure, um, but it's working. And uh, Leanne, as you hear these, I don't want to say competing, but definitely um, two very present instruments with a single instrument sort of supporting the two of them. You may enter at any given point to recite your poetry. Of course. Of course, I also have uh, my awe popped as well for that extra extra performance and persuasion vibes. Um, and I think uh, I, I had a feeling I might I might be showy uh, tonight. So I have that monochromatic jacket that I got from the uh, Giovanni's. Nice. Um, so a mm -hmm. lot of black and white aesthetic with a little bit of red I think as like, I have a single red rose um, and then my shoes I think are white with like little flecks of red almost to uh, simulate blood. Um, and like the first thing you hear is just the tapping from the shoes as I like aggressively heel toe my way in. You <laughs> can hear me coming before you see me. And then I think I like almost as if conducting like for it to slow down just a little bit. Uh, to everyone playing to give it more of a slow I don't want to say quite central but it's it's definitely meant to be slower as a vibe um, and yeah <clears throat> passion pain, love, and sorrow how I long to touch you tomorrow, senseless hunger infinite desire for you my dear I'll never tire your eyes, your passion your fire too I my dear belong to you simple i may or may, may not make eye contact with the giant woman i saw earlier this <laughs> night <laughs> uh let me just yeah uh you can even at this distance you can tell that she uh, uh gives herself blush of life so that she may blush a little bit on her face um love that energy and after a respectful amount of time uh after the the words are spoken and the uh, instruments are still playing. You hear a uh, slow applause uh, build in the theater uh, as the performance once again comes to a close. Um, you are uh, immediately greeted upon uh, returning to the backstage by uh, people coming to congratulate you once again on a performance. Um, one uh, mortal amongst the group who's like who seems like <laughs> sort of there as like arm candy a little bit to one of the kindred uh is like you can tell their ma their makeup is just like stained from tears pouring down their face and they grab your hand leon and they say of, of all of my years coming to the palace theater i've never s witnessed something s so beautiful before my days will be made uh, darker now that i am not going to have that in my life anymore you are your passion for my work is quite beautiful and wonderful and I think I like make direct eye contact I hope that you can carry it with your heart for you as long as you may live and of course I will still on occasion uh, make an appearance here as it fits it's fun to keep things less structured it's so humble too <laughs> uh and sort of returns to their their kindred um and uh there's a, a a sort of um just like passive uh casual noble um party going on just of like uh the occasional feedings on any anyone that has been brought here uh and uh hobnobbing and you're free to um do whatever you like here 
I approach. Are, are we all together again, or is this just the performers? Uh, you know, you were all back there. Um, okay. Yeah, cool. it's sort of been like the the people that came here, knowing that their upper class have come to like greet everyone, and the back mm. sort of green room area has been converted into like a mix a wine and mixer, but the wine is blood. <laughs> Aha. I'll approach uh, Morian and say. I've never heard an interpretation of the dance macabre that was so moving. Imogen, darling, uh, and I reach out for her. Your playing as an accompanist was miraculous. And Leon, of course. What a wizard you are with words. You, you humble me. Thank you very, very much. Perhaps was we quite... should do make a trio thing. Mm, <laughs> yes, it was quite the flair you inserted into the performance, literally. As I kind of like knowingly <laughs> look with like an eyebrow, like ah. ah. <laughs> yeah. You hear off in the you distance. Uh, yes, yes, of course, of course. No, they'll they'll, they'll be back when. Yes, no. Don't... <clears throat> uh, and uh, Melinda walks over and says, Excellent, excellent. That was grand. It's so great to be on the. Um, uh, what? No, it's so great to be on the stage again with you. Um, Vama? What are we. What are we going by these days? Uh, yes, uh, we've swapped back to more in oh, these days. Excellent, yes. As ever since the, you know, the, the publication. Of that absolute, uh, that absolute pile of dirty leaves that they call the penny dreadful, the emphasis on the dreadful, uh, I have decided to sort of swap back so as to avoid direct association with the protagonist of that story. Yes, we should perhaps tell uh, Carmilla, if we ever see her, to do a similar deed. Uh, she did just simply jumble the letters around and expect that people wouldn't be wise to that. That's what I've, I've been saying that. It's even in the story. They called her out for it. Yes. Come yeah. on. Okay, what are we doing let's here? Let's call her Ilum, Ilum Mark or something. I don't know. Yes. Um, yes. Malika. Malika. Right. Just, just silly. Regardless, I don't wish to be rude, but what? why is the city graced with your presence again, my dear? Ah, uh, yes. Uh, well... I have come back, and along with my companions here from the IOU, the legendary IOU, I have come back because I wish to stop. Wait, I'm going to focus in again. Got it. I wish to stop more death that is not being caused by me, but instead be, could be inflicted upon me and my companions, which is to say Caiaphas Smith might be coming back. And dramatically, we hear a glass drop. <laughs> <gasps> at, the, at the name, there's lightning and horses yeah. laying in the back. <laughs> it's incredible. Do you pay them to do that? It's amazing. Theatrics, my dear. <sighs> of course. I'm... In light of recent events, I have obviously been preoccupied and have forgotten the occurrences. But you are right. Um, we are safe to talk here. The, I often find it safer to communicate within a crowd. You are often the most alone. Your fears are justified. The havoc that has happened within the city recently is reminiscent of the past. I do appreciate your awakening for such an occurrence, and I do hope that you stay awake this time. Yes, uh, I would. It has been an adventure coming back. Um, uh, can I, is there like some, she seems, does she, does she seem like, even for the level of grief that she has experienced, unnaturally distant, uh, for, with based on my experience with her? Um. Give me a wits and awareness, but I will tell you that she is definitely, Melinda has always been sort of a, um, she, 
She tries to slip in words underneath what she's actually saying to people a lot of the time. Um, and while she does respect her friends, uh, she doesn't take um, she doesn't take shit. And will try no, to tell no. you in a Melinda way where if you're not paying attention, you might not notice it. Okay, I got two tens, so that's a crit, Ooh. plus two more eights. So I think that's six successes. Yeah! Mm. You you have known Melinda for a long time. And you know that uh, her and her wife, Olive, have changed multiple times. They've adapted to their surroundings. They're... They've bought and sold theaters to fit in with high society. They've changed their accents. They've claimed to be from different countries. Like they are chameleons in the in society, um, and even more valuable, you know, when they're acting. And while it is a very good act, the mourning is in fact an act. Fucking knew oh. it. <laughs> oh. Um. Can I? D- hmm. Does that seem? D- does it seem like it's an act? Because oh, she's not actually sad that her wife may have died, but more like, but her wife just may not have died at all. Um. I will say, even with that role, it is hard to tell. As I said, the 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 Lees have historically been adaptive mm. and her and Melinda's latest role is mourning grieving wife. Uh, I'm going to look very intently at Melinda uh, and I say Melinda Now I want you to be very honest with me in this moment. Well, I don't believe we both I've know. Ever been. <laughs> Perhaps uh, a better word would be open. Now, we both know that we have assumed a great many disguises, a great many guises over the years, in order to survive, and often in order to thrive. And I think we've both done our fair share of thriving. Now, Melinda, you would tell me if there was any part of this latest development in your presentation that was, in fact, a bit of artifice, wouldn't you? She inhales dramatically because you know that kindred don't breathe. It is a show. <laughs> uh, and Imogen remembers to, to move her shoulders like she's breathing. <laughs> um, and she sort of gently reaches out her hand for you to place yours upon it. I do. Uh, and she places her hand on top of yours and almost like sticking your hand in a vice uh, (laughs) she tightly holds your hand in place and looks at you deep in your eyes and says Morian I have been a great admirer of your presence in the community for centuries And as you say, we have thrived and adapted over the years. Some of us have taken our licks. Some of us have faced those that came after us. And those of us have recoiled into the shadows. Perhaps one of us were right. Perhaps And she sort of like twists and looks at the others for a moment. Perhaps once in a while, the shadows are the place to survive. Well, I'm a being of shadows, my dear Melinda. So it seems that uh, if that's the way you're leaning, we are in very good company. Uh, And as I'm like smiling at her, uh, my glinting eyes, uh, the pupils start to expand to just be so that I just have these fully black uh, irises as well. Uh, Just looking directly at her, though, so that it's not like I'm looking around the room uh, and I give like a big grin. Uh, Her fangs begin to grow and sharpen, uh, staring dead eyed. And the rest of you just see two 
very old kindred uh, competing with who can be the most extra. <laughs> and I'm going to scry her soul. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Give me that rouse. Been lucky so far. While this is happening, I lean over to Lena. I'm like, should we leave them alone? <laughs> I'm <laughs> like wondering the same. I mean, I it have seems some... like we're intruding in a moment. <laughs> it, it does feel feels deeply intimate in a bad way. Yes. <laughs> like, I, don't I know this type rouse. of look. Yes. I pass my rouse check, uh, and I'm going to spend a willpower to maximize. Oh yeah. Potentially this this I got one more from that. Ooh. So one, two, three, four, five, six successes. Uh ooh. I fail again? As you reach out and this this growing miasma of shadow in your mind forming around these two, you find a momentary weakness. Yes! As you Pierce into Melinda's soul, and you get yeah. one question. Is Olive really dead? No, she is not. I fucking <laughs> knew it. And that's where we're going to end for tonight. Ah! <laughs> Holy shit. This lying bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I am not at all surprised. I never trust me. Never. <laughs> um, hey, everybody. Uh, this was an episode. It was a great one. I had a great time. I hope y'all did as well while watching it. Uh, if you did and you would like to show your support, the best way to do so is by heading on over to patreon.com forward slash tabletop titties. When you become a patron, you get access to a multitude of behind the scenes snippets, polls that affect our games, bonus episodes, and more. We also have a merch store. If you saw the show tonight and thought, oh my God, you know what I need? I need Titties merch all over the place. Because oh no. these people are rad. These characters are rad. The logo's rad. All of that stuff. You can get it on t-shirts, sweaters, <laughs> books, mugs, m most things. You can get Cats? lots of merch. Can you get it all on a cat? Yeah. Uh, no, that I don't think you want to put things on live animals no. like that, unless you're gonna put like a t shirt on and, and like, like have them like a little sit bandana, in it. though. Like a little... <laughs> <laughs> That'd be pretty cute. That'd be pretty cute. Um, what would also be extra cute is if you uh also bought uh from our pride collection, even though it's no longer pride month, but pride month is every month, baby. All the and months. that stuff is never we are never taking that off the store because why the heck would we do that? Especially when all of the profits from that collection can go to support community, a nonprofit organization based in Vancouver, BC, that works to improve queer, trans, and two spirit lives. They provide a safer space for LGBTQ2SA people and their allies to fully self express while feeling welcome and included. So definitely go ahead and check that out. Uh, speaking of supporting these titties, our Indiegogo shout out for this evening goes to Mariella Schutte. Uh, thank you so much, Mariella, for supporting our Indiegogo campaign and helping us get this season up and running. We could not do it without people like you. Uh, last but not least, make sure to follow us on social media at Tabletop Titties. And if you tweet using hashtag TTTitties, you can get an NPC named after you. In this show, most likely people you that will probably get murdered or eaten by one of us. But <laughs> there are those on the D&D show, which you may survive longer. I don't know. Maybe. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Um, yeah. Uh, you can find all of this info on our website at www.tabletoptitties.com. And remember, when we say titties, it is with double Ds. Jeremy, why oh, don't you yeah. tell us about yourself and, and plug all of your projects? <laughs> yeah! Absolutely. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Jeremy Cobb. Uh, you normally hear me on the podcast Three Black Halflings. Uh, I it, We are a talk show podcast. Well, really more of a variety show. Uh, we do interviews. Uh, we do deep dives into various D&D &D classes. We give D GM tips. We give player tips. Uh, we talk about current events. Uh, we talk about diversity and inclusivity in Dungeons and Dragons, TTRPG, and nerds, the nerd spheres in general. Uh, and we also do actual play. 
for which I am the resident DM. Uh, we just released a series. If you're enjoying this uh, Victorian flavored <laughs> adventure, we actually just released a sort of gothic horror noir mini series called City of the Black Rose. Uh, so, you know, go check that out. We're playing some D and D uh, in a sort of uh, Victorian London slash 1950s New York style setting that I made. Uh, and you can nice. follow uh, Three Black Halflings on Twitter, Instagram, uh, Facebook, at three, that's the number three, Black Halflings. You can follow me, Jeremy Cobb, on Twitter at Jeremy Cobb one And that's Cobb with two Bs and the number one. Yeah. And you can find our podcast wherever pods are cast. <laughs> and we'll be yeah. uh, seeing you next week as well, right here. Yay. So I'm so excited. This has been a delight. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, I'm sorry about last chapter, but hopefully this is goofy <laughs> enough to make up for it. <laughs> uh, stick around. We're going to raid uh, Dark Tales and uh, show them some love. Uh, tell them how awesome they are. And uh, we'll see mm -hmm. you on Tuesday. Uh, with some D&D. &D. Hell yeah. Bye. 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 Bye.